Hi, on this video, we'll be talking about the EIA TIA wiring standards. So EIA stands for Electronic Industries Alliance and TIA Telecommunications Industry Association. So in systems administration, the system administrator has to ensure the standards or the standardization when it comes to the network infrastructure. And one way to ensure is the EIA TIA wiring standards. This is the deployment and adaptation of the standards on the network infrastructure being managed by the systems admin. Okay, so for the outline of the topic, so we will be talking about the EIA TIA wiring standards and the coverage area of the EIA TIA, which includes entrance facility, equipment room, vertical cabling, telecommunication closet or telecom closet, you've got horizontal cabling, and the work area. So this comprises the EIA TIA wiring standards for computer networks. Let's get started. Let's start with the EIA TIA wiring standards description or definition. So basically, this is the standards for commercial and telecommunications. It consists of a group of standard covering different aspects of premise, cabling, and other wiring practices. So if you will remember, you've got the color coding on the UTP, okay? So that is basically based on the EIA TIA wiring standards wherein we have the EIA TIA 568A and 568B color coding for UTP cables. Now let's talk about the first area which is the entrance facility. Now entrance facility is an entrance to a building for both public and private network service cables including wireless, including the entrance point of the building and continuing to the entrance room or space. In every communication or in every infrastructure network, so the horizontal cabling, the telecom outlets, the work area, the backbone, intermediate and main cross connects, this should start on the entrance facility. Okay, so entrance facility basically is a place in a campus or in a building wherein all the communications leading to the outside world is connected and uh, organized and placed. So if you have the internet or ISP connection, it should terminated or it should be terminated on the entrance facility. If you have the cable TV, it should be terminated on the entrance facility. Basically, all your connections to the outside world is terminated on the entrance facility. Entrance facility is also an area where the responsibility of the network administrator or the systems administrator begins and the responsibility of the service provider ends. So in a given building, for instance, Entrance facility is basically located on the entrance of the building, all right, or on the ground floor wherein the network infrastructure being managed by the systems admin is or has started. Okay, so on this diagram here, the entrance facility is the entrance of the office or the organization which is on the ground floor. Okay, so the next one is the equipment room. So equipment room contains the main distribution frame, the main location for backbone cabling, phone systems, power protection, you've got a UPS, LAN equipment such as uh, routers, switches, bridges, firewalls, hubs, and any file servers or server farm and data processing equipment, including the mechanical terminations. So a typical equipment room look like this. 
wherein you have the server farm, all your core devices is located. So if you still remember the hierarchy in network um, implementation, you've got the core, the distribution, and the access. Basically, access is on the user's end, distribution is on the telecom closets, and the core is basically inside the equipment room. Okay, so on, on the equipment room, or we call it the main distribution facility in some books, okay? So observe that the cable is running on the ceiling or it is on the floor or under that the space between the floor and the base, all right? And as much as possible, all cables should be color-coded when you implement network uh, infrastructure. Okay, so next is vertical cabling. Now, vertical cabling is also called as the backbone cabling or, or backbone wiring. These are the wires that extend from the floor to floor across the campus or from telecommunication closets to an equipment room. So this is contrasted with horizontal cabling, which connects individual workstation to the network. Now, based on our um, layout here, a vertical cabling basically connects your telecommunication closet or telecom closet or TC. So it is recommended in this design for every floor of the building, there should be a telecommunication closet. And this telecommunication closet on each floor is connected via vertical cabling or backbone cabling. So as what I said earlier, the telecommunication closet serves as the distribution on the infrastructure. And the equipment room serves as the core of the infrastructure. Okay, so the next area is telecom closet or telecommunication closet. So this is also known as the wiring closet. Okay or the distribution facility, okay? Or in, in some books, they refer to as the intermediate distribution facility. So a room or closet that houses all the telecommunication equipment, especially the switches that, that distributes um, the network over the infrastructure. Servers as termination point for the horizontal cabling system of a network and it contains the network distribution panels, cross connects and backbone. So again, in our building layout, telecommunication closet is this orange uh, box here, which distributes access to all the workstations and work area over the infrastructure, okay? Now, if we get inside the telecommunication closet, basically it contains switches. Okay, which is used for distribution. Now, in some organization, this is how a typical telecom closet look like. Okay, you've got the messy connections. All right. So, and if you will observe on this diagram, so the cable is not organized, and they are using a single colored UTP cable. Okay. A good design of a telecommunication closet should be look like this, wherein your cables are organized, you're using a color-coded cables, for instance, all blue goes to this area, all yellow goes to this area, all green goes to this floor, and so on. Okay, it should be organized. So that's telecommunication closet. Or the intermediate distribution facility or ITF. Okay, next would be the horizontal cabling. Horizontal cabling is any cabling that is used to connect floors wiring closet to wall plates in the work area to provide local area network drops for connecting users' computers to the network. So this includes horizontal cables, telecommunications outlet or connectors in the work area. You've got the wall patch um, connections or wall outlet 
mechanical terminations, and patch cords or jumpers located in the telecommunications room and may include multi-user telecommunications outlet assemblies and consolidation points. So using again our layout here or the building layout, so the horizontal cabling is the cable that runs from the telecom closet going to the wall plates on the work area. So these red wires here is considered to be a horizontal cable or horizontal cabling. This uses UTP to run from the telecom closet to the wall plates on the work area. And this has a maximum distance of or maximum length of 90 meters. Well, in theory, UTP cables can be run up to one, one, 100 meters. Okay, so and therefore, the practice on the EIA TIA wiring standard is to use only a maximum length of 90 meters on the horizontal cable. Okay, so from the horizontal cable, basically, it is terminated on the wall plates. Okay. And from the wall plates going to the workstation, in there on the work area, we use as a patch cable. And patch cable recommended length is 6 meters. So you've got horizontal cabling having a 90 meters maximum length and patch cable which has 6 meters maximum length. So that's 96. Okay, 96 meters in total. Now where is the 4 meters? Okay, so 4 meters is basically used on the telecommunication closet wherein we connect the patch panel and the switch okay the cable that is used to connect patch panel to the switch should be having a maximum length of four meters so all in all the total run of the utp cable is 100 meters okay All right, so the last one would be the work area. Basically, the work area is where the workstation is located. This is where the end users in the production area is located. So the work area is the space inside a building where employees, building occupants, or system users work and their communication equipment. This is also the area where the horizontal communication cables are terminated. Okay. Now, on this example, basically this is the work area, okay? This is where your workers, your programmers are working, okay? And this is where also the horizontal cable is terminated via the wall plates, okay? So, these are the components of the EIA TIA wiring standard. So, if a systems administrator is going to implement a wiring infrastructure, Okay, so for the organization, they have to ensure that these components are present on the implementation. Okay, so to summarize, again, the EIA TIA wiring standard has the following area, namely entrance facility, equipment room, telecommunication closets, which are connected by a backbone cabling or vertical cabling. You've got horizontal cabling which runs from the telecom closet to the work area and terminated on the wall plates. And the last one is the work area. Okay. So um, those are the components that needs to be ensured in adopting the standards in structured cabling for computer networks. All right. So that ends up my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.